It's been a while. Of course. Go ahead. No. Oh. <laughs> now there's a question I wasn't expecting. <sighs> Very well. I'll tell you what I know once more. The once renowned Raiden Gokuden, comprised of five branches Aminoma, Futsu, Ishin, Hyakume, and Senju. The art of forging practiced by these five clans was first taught to them personally by the almighty Shogun. Over time, the five branches diverged from one another as generations of bladesmiths honed and perfected their craft until they became five distinct traditions. Most of the great swordsmith clans of old have since fallen into decline, and for a long time, only the Amenoma branch kept its art alive. But fortunately, Kaede Harakazuha recently returned to Inazuma and took up the mantle of the Ishin art. Now, two clans remain of the original Gokuden Five. If my memory serves me right, you yourself were present when he forged the Ishin blade. Oh yeah, we were! Paima remembers that now! We learned a bit about the decline of the riding Gokuden then too! It seems like such a shame. <sighs> that, my friends, is a tragic tale indeed. In fact, this was not made known to me for most of my life. All these years, I knew of those great clan's demise, but never the cause. <sighs> Only recently, when the question was on my mind, did I ask Kaedehara Kazuha about this. He told me that, as we are both heirs to a branch of the Raiden Gokunin, it was right that I should know the truth. There is no harm in telling you, but I must warn you, it is a dark and sorrowful tale. The Raiden Gokuden were the targets of a murderous rampage by a vengeful bladesmith. Vengeful? Why? Four hundred years ago, so I'm told, there was a catastrophic malfunction in Tatarasuna's furnace. One brave swordsmith heard the commotion and chose not to flee, but he rushed to the scene, hoping to prevent a disaster. Tatarasuna was home to a state-of-the-art forging and smelting operation in that day, and overseeing it was the armory officer. His surname was Niwa, though he had family ties to the Kaedehara clan. Knowing that they had just one chance to save countless lives, Mr. Niwa and the swordsmith leaped together into the furnace. The furnace quickly stabilized, but neither of them made it out. The smith's death, though heroic, dealt a devastating blow to his family's fortunes. His orphan son was left to fend for himself and grew up deeply resentful at the world. In his heart, the whole of Inazuma was culpable in his tragedy. He hated the almighty Shogun for her apparent indifference towards his father's death, and he hated everyone who had done nothing to try and save him. Powerless and destitute, the only legacy he had to pass on to his children was his hatred. Generation after generation bore this grudge, living in utter misery. Alas, if only the story could have ended there. But 100 years ago, the then head of this family reached the end of his wits. He could bear their fate no longer, and yet he could do nothing to change it. Finally, he made a drastic decision to take revenge on the ride in Gokuden. In doing so, he sought to vent his pet anger and shake the very foundations of Inazuma's forging industry. In his fury, he murdered indiscriminately, killing even bladesmiths from the Hyakume clan which he belonged to. His goal was absolute, the devastation of all of the Raiden Gokuden. 
But when he came to the Kaidehara and Kamisato clans, his killing spree came to an abrupt end. He failed to catch them unawares. They fought back fiercely, and they did not spare his life. That is why the Kaidehara clan and their Ishin art survived that day. I suppose they were the lucky ones, under the dire circumstances. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Kazuha? Why, yes. Just yesterday, in fact. We spoke for a while over some tea. He seemed well. My pleasure. Don't tell Paimon. There are other places you want to visit too, right? <laughs> Your expression says it all. You can't hide anything from Paimon. On to the next stop. Lead the way, traveler. Paimon will be right behind you. <sighs> Whenever I'm reminded of what happened back then, it always weighs on my heart. We're here! Um, this is the Yashiro Commission's headquarters, so... Traveler, it's been a while. If you're looking for the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I'm afraid your timing is unfortunate. They're not here right now. Are they out on business? The Commissioner is out on business, and Miss Kamisato is standing in for some meetings in the Commissioner's place. If it's urgent, you're welcome to wait inside until they get back. What do you think? Shall we go in? If it were anyone else, I couldn't allow it. But seeing as you're so close with the Commissioner and Miss Kamisato, I think it should be okay. We'll be heading in then. Thanks! Hmm? Hello, dears. Is there something you want to say? <laughs> of course, Traveler. Yes, I know who you are. Miss Kamisato has told me about you. What would you like to know? Oh, they're both very well indeed. Lately, Miss Kamisato has been rather busy attending all kinds of meetings and occasionally paying visits to some local organizations on the Commissioner's behalf. As for the Commissioner himself, well, you know, busy as ever, that much hasn't changed. Although, he does seem to be in a rather good mood these days. So pretty much business as usual in the Yashiro Commission, huh? Very much so. Questions? You're very welcome. In fact, I would love nothing more than for you to come and visit more often. But I'm sure you must be far too busy to have time for that. Miss Kamisato talks about you all the time. She seems so thrilled to have you as a friend, and she's always saying how talented you are and how much she admires you. I must say, many things in Inazuma seem to have taken a turn for the better since you arrived here. So, you're not just Miss Kamisato's knight in shining armor, you know. 
You're a hero to us all. I mean it. Whenever the commissioner dines at home, Toma always joins him. I always find myself at my most relaxed when I'm serving the two of them and listening to them chat away. The commissioner has such a busy schedule that he doesn't always have the chance to take his meals at home. But given the opportunity, he always prefers to dine here. They say it's because Toma's a much better chef than most. <laughs> oh, the commissioner is so fond of home comforts. They get to talking about you sometimes, too, you know. Always with a very fond tone. The way one would talk about dear old friends around whom one can truly be themselves. Miss Kamisato occasionally joins them as well. Whenever the whole family gets together and they start talking about people they've met and experiences they've had, you always get a mention. It's been many years now since the late Mr. and Mrs. Kamisato passed away. Much has happened in the Kamisato clan in that time. As someone who is old and gray enough to have watched their son and daughter grow up, it makes me so happy to see them meet a dependable friend whose company they enjoy so much. So, in the future, if you ever do have the time, please know you are always very welcome at the Yashiro Commission Headquarters. There will always be at least one old lady who would be delighted to have the pleasure of your company. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Haima likes it here too. Also, you were saying something about the food here being really great. Paimon's itching to try it. We may just have to invite ourselves around for dinner sometime. Uh, uh, Paimon meant we should come pay a visit again real soon. Ideally around dinner time. <laughs> of course. You're always welcome. Alright, goodbye for now. We're, uh... Where are we going next? Great! Goodbye, ma'am! Don't worry, we'll see ourselves out! All right, then. Take care now. Hope to see you soon! Oh, are you two leaving already? Yep, everything's taken care of now. Don't worry! Very well. Safe travels. Goodbye! Safe travels. Goodbye. Take it easy. Look after yourselves, won't you? Take care now. Do my eyes deceive me, or is that the Traveler and Paimon? Xavier, what are you doing here? I was in the general area, and now I'm in this specific area. There, that's me. So what about you two? We had some questions and thought you might be able to help. Certainly do. I've researched the furnace here in some depth. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. Like the back of my hand? <laughs> Make no mistake, I have been here a good many times before. 
Not only that, but I've met people in Inazuma whose families used to live in Tatarasuna years ago. They said it's all true, the history here. Hmm? Oh, well, uh, it's a long story, don't you know? The tale of Tatarasuna starts a long time ago. I'm told that its history is one of the most foremost forging and smelting operations in the nation. Goes back around a thousand years. Still, the furnace has had a couple of serious maintenance issues along the way. A couple? When exactly? One was just in the last few years, the other was several hundred years ago. A fun fact, I'm not the first Fontaine tech guy to come and work on it either. There was a guy back then too. They say he was a mechanic who consulted on a technology upgrade. It seems like the technological collaboration between our two nations goes back a long way. How about that? Hey! Weren't you gonna ask Xavier something about Tatarasuna? Come on, ask already! Oh, I didn't realize you two were here for a history lesson. Me neither! Paimon doesn't know what's gotten into this one today. Feels like we've been preparing for a history exam or something. Hmm? What brought this on? Did you just wake up today with a sudden burning desire for historical knowledge? Sure, go ahead. A kabuki mono? Hmm, no, I can't say that I have. I do know the word, Inazuman for those eccentric types who always go around dressed to the nines. Just the sort of person that I'd like to meet, actually. But sadly, I've never had the pleasure, nor have I come across anything to do with a kabuki mono where Tatara Suna is concerned. Of course! Don't mention it. Oh, we're leaving? Okay, bye, Xavier! Oh, you're most welcome. More than happy to help. Farewell. Looks like you got all the information you're looking for. Sure, but what's up with you today? Whatever it is, it seems like it's really troubling you. Smile, Spinal Crocodile. No matter what happens, Paimon will always be there for you. Hey, don't mention it. <laughs> All right, let's head off and go be the Hida. It's them! Akaba! Sawada! You're still here? Indeed we are! If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. We have time! What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. Still looking for more info about Tatarasuna, huh? Hmm. Should we join them? Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. Huh? Oh, uh, of course.
I presume you'll want to read mine as well. Here.
Well, what do you think? Hey, Traveler. Remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? Well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, we have some friends in Inazuma, and... Wow. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? Then I guess it must be true. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back at it. These guys are really into this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. Will do. Great! I can finally move forward with my novel. But what a sad story. I don't know what I was expecting, but I never would have guessed this. Nahida, we're here! Traveler, Paimon, how have you been? Ugh, where to start? Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly, the sun was up. And then she decided she wanted to go to Inazuma. The Balladeer? Hmm. This sounds like some kind of code name. You look troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? Traveler? Hey, what's wrong? You look so upset. Quite a story. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermin's soul, hoping that he could change the past. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Nevertheless, it does make sense. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermin's soul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. 
so you believe this person really existed and we just don't remember him because... Well, because he literally changed the world? Yes. Theoretically speaking, it is possible to do this. But I'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it. The Traveler comes from a world beyond to that. That's why there's no information about her in Ermin's soul. And it also explains why any changes to Ermin's soul wouldn't affect her. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died, right? Once the balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that, and... If he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends, it would be hard not to try. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermansoul and erase himself even though he didn't have much strength left. Yeah, it does make sense, but it still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but it seems like he got nothing in return. Please wait a moment. I want to check something. Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. It turns out that... I have a strange way of confirming everything she has told us. What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. You should take a look. Is this... a fairy tale? Who wrote it? I authored this record myself. Huh? You... wrote a fairy tale? That somehow has something to do with the balladeer? When combined with the Traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. Hold on. So this record survived from... the... past past? Yes. Any information about the Balladeer or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. 
Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the Balladeer entered Ermansoul. That's incredible! What a great idea! And sending the Traveler to Ermansoul with the Balladeer must have been a further precaution. I knew she'd remember everything. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one she told us. The now-erased life of the Balladeer. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night, and lament to itself as it gazed at its reflection in the water. I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. But the monster soon found solace when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Even without a tail and fur like ours, you are still one of us. Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. A gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, You are the cleverest among us. Surely you can help us find a way to solve this? The monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, and pure. The monster gave a heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. Take this, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together, but the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. After burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. Never again would it cherish a single creature, nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight! If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. I will become the new moon, the answer to everything. Then, no one will know that there were once birds, foxes, and cats in this world. And no one can know that they were different. We solved it! <sighs> I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, 
They kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. That's why they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The Balladeer agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders, and although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail, that Conria was where your twin first came into this world. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own Harbinger. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around. But still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth, and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Yeah, Nahida's right! Cheer up! How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take her out for a walk to clear her head? You got it! Come on, Traveler! You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. Let's go get a snack from one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar! That'll be sure to lift our spirits! It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up. There's a few things I'd like to look into. You should go take a walk and try to unwind. We're here! What should we eat first? Hey! Figured it all out?
Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Hey! Hey, wait! Hmm? You mean me? No, not you. That kid! Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. Who's that guy? You know him or something? He's who? You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here, and then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias, and I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Then leave it to me. I'll find some more. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a... a drifter or something? That's right, I am. We can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey! What do we do now? Okay, stay out of sight! Don't let him see you! Yeah... This'll do. Balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his Sunsetius? Isn't that a bit too cruel? Oh, all right. This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. Ah, <sighs> have we met before? No, we haven't met. But you know me? I have no recollection. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? huh? You were right! The look on his face! I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Look, I'm just a wanderer, but seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. Okay, but please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. Are you really working for that guy? 
He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes. I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm, and he let me take shelter in his cart. In return, I said I'd be his helper for a while. That's oddly nice of you. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you, okay? Then let's return to the city. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> I was just about to pay you anyway. Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world. Like you had nowhere to be and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country if he's not even in a hurry? Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. Thank you. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. Don't worry about me. What's wrong? Huh? Are you...? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful walk. You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Hmm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me, and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in your case, it seems that it ought to be called a uh, previous incarnation. Oh, like a past life or something? Yes. Something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? Um... Uh... 
Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear. But I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. Is truth something you care a lot about? Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, you did many things that would be considered evil. You nearly died because of what other people did, and many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Sometimes, you have to let parts of yourself go, or you'll never be happy. I gave everything I had, but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place in time, a chain of cause and effect, a cycle of karma and consequence. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but... Yeah, we weren't your biggest fans. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Please, I want to see them for myself. I want to experience my own transgressions. Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Oh, I'm just a puppet, with no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to, to fill the void within me, except maybe these sins that can never be undone. Very well. As you wish. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, we'd better keep an eye on you. Understood. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. No matter what lies ahead, I'll face it. Whatever it takes. I'm just sorry that you have to join me for the whole thing. It's time to get ready. <laughs>